Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 27. And this week I've got a really cool tip showing how you can get Photoshop to record every single thing you do within Photoshop. But not only that, also produce a text file with all that information in for you as well. Okay, so let me show you now then how we can set up Photoshop so that it can be your personal assistant and give you a written record of every retouching step that you've done on a picture. We're gonna use the one that I've got on screen now, and I'm not gonna go through a whole retouch. I'm just gonna go through a number of techniques to at least give something for Photoshop to record so I can then show you the actual written record. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is go to the Preferences menu. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go to the Photoshop menu at the top, and I'm going to go to Preferences and General. And when we do that, down around about the, the bottom third of the screen here, we've got a section called History Log. And I'm going to put a little tick in that, so anything that was greyed out now becomes clickable and usable. So we've got a number of options here. It says Save Log Items too. We've got Metadata, Text File, or both. Now all I want really is a written record of it, like a text file. So I'm gonna choose Text File. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the word Choose, and this is where I want it to actually provide me with this text file, whereabouts on my computer I want it to store it. And I'll just put it into the onto the desktop, and I'll call it uh, Personal personal record. Call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it personal record and it's gonna go onto my desktop and then I'll just click save. Then the next thing I'm going to do is just in the bit here, bottom bit here, it says edit log items. And this is where we can tell Photoshop exactly how much or how little we want it to record. Now I want this to be absolutely everything. The main two, although there are three options in here, it says sessions only, concise or detailed. The main one I want to use is detailed because the difference between that and concise is say for example, I go and use a filter like the Gaussian blur filter. When I choose detailed, it will tell me the exact amount that of, of Gaussian blur that I applied. If I just choose concise, it'll only tell me in the record, written record that I went into Gaussian blur. It won't give me any numbers. And that's not really what I want here. I want to be able to replicate a look. So I need to know what I went into and how much I did. So I'll always leave it on detailed. And then we'll click OK. So now then, Photoshop is, is kind of on a listening watch to every single thing that I do. So I've got my image opened up. Let's just go through just a couple of things here. First of all, I'll maybe go and change the colouring in it. So I'll go to something like a selective colour adjustment layer. I'm in the neutrals. By default, when you come into selective colour, generally it'll be in the reds. But if I go to something like the neutrals, I can then play around with the sliders here and I can give it the kind of look that I want. So let's just add a little bit coloring over here and we'll get the magenta slider bring that over just a little bit as well uh, something like that increase the yellows increase the cyan just a little bit more and we'll increase the yellows as well something like that so it's just a little bit of a color difference we just turn that on and off we can see that adds in quite a nice bit of color there to change the mood and the next thing I can do is something that I've shown in a previous video. Let's add a, a lens flare to the sword here. So I'm going to add a blank layer. And I'm going to go to my toolbar and get my elliptical marquee tool. Hold down my shift key and drag out a circle around about that kind of size will be fine. And I'm going to put it anywhere on the screen. It doesn't actually matter where it goes, but we'll just put it right in the center there. And then I'll go to edit and fill and we'll choose 50% gray. Then I'm gonna to go to filter, render, and lens flare. Filter, render, lens flare. And when we're in here, this is where we've got the usual kind of lens flare dialog box within Photoshop, where we've got all those typical Photoshop lens flares coming off, those really obvious ones. But what we're gonna do is just drag the lighting. I'm on using the 105 mil prime. And again, this is all in a video that I've got recorded earlier on, but I'll put the light right in the center. So it kind of restricts where all those lens flares go off. We've just got a nice bright center part. And we can adjust the brightness and we'll go for something like that. Click okay. 
and then we'll change the blend mode of that to hard light so we can at least see the light source behind it. Let's get rid of select and deselect so we've got no more marching ants. Get my move tool and reposition it, but we've obviously got this load of white around here. We only want this center part, which is the brightest part. So I'll add a layer mask and we'll go and get a gradient and I'll just get something like the radial gradient. Make sure my foreground color is black. Put it in the middle, click outwards, and there we go. So now I've got this lens flare in the center. And again, don't worry about the steps on that. That's all in a previous video. Might just resize it. So we'll go to edit and transfer, uh, go to free transform, shift and option key just to bring it down just a little bit and move tool to reposition it. So all I'm doing is just playing around here, just building up some steps and retouching to give something for Photoshop to remember. Now, the last thing I think I'll do is I'm gonna create a merged or combined layer at the top of the layer stack. Now there's lots of ways we can do that. We can do control alt shift E or command option shift E. Another way we can do that instead of having your fingers dancing all over the keyboard is just go to select all, edit and copy merged, edit and paste. So that does exactly the same, the same as that long keyboard shortcut there, where it's just put a combined layer at the top of the layer stack. And that's basically all these layers below, the one with the lens flare, the selective color and the background layer, all combined into one layer right at the top of the layer stack. And you can see that's combined. If I turn everything else off, the picture remains the same. So the last thing I'll do, then let's go to a filter just to see what it can do when I actually go to a filter. So I'll go to filter, Topaz Labs, and I'll choose one of my favorite ones at the moment, which is Topaz Clarity. So we'll jump into Topaz Clarity. We'll apply just a little bit of contrast over on the right-hand side here. Incidentally, when I'm using this, I tend to find that I only stay in this right-hand side here. And there's two sliders, micro contrast and low contrast. Absolutely love this plugin. And they're two sliders that I generally only ever use. It doesn't work on every image, but for some images, some images even, it really does add some impact to it. So we'll go for that and we'll click OK. Topaz processes it, sends me back into Photoshop, and then what I'll do is I'll just save this. So I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll just save it somewhere on my desktop, and we'll call it uh, Prints, like so, and I'll change it to a JPEG, and then click Save, click OK, and then File and Close. And don't want to save the original, don't want to save it over the original, so we'll just click Don't Save. Okay, so now that we've finished in the retouching, we've saved our image and closed it, Photoshop has now stopped being on that listening watch. So it's no longer recording anything. So now we can head over onto our desktop to have a look for that text file to see exactly what it's produced for us. And here you can see a very, very detailed report of absolutely every single step that we went through. At the very top here, it gives us our file name, and then it goes through the selective color adjustment layer that we went through, telling us that we moved the cyan slider to 32, magenta to 23, and the yellow to 15, whilst we're in the neutrals. Carrying on down, it gives us details about the lens flare. It even tells us initially where we actually put that circle, that ellipse, to fill in with that 50% gray. It tells us as well the kind of lens flare that we chose, which was that 105 millimeter prime. And we can see working all the way through it, absolutely everything that we did is covered. Now we did actually go into a filter and, and Photoshop will record the fact that we went into a filter and it kind of depends which filter you use as to how it manages to record exactly what you've done. Now we went into Topaz Clarity and we can see there's lots and lots of zeros being produced here. Now all these zeros are gonna be sli represent sliders within Topaz Clarity, also presets within Topaz Clarity. But looking on the right hand side of the, when we're actually in Topaz Clarity, we worked on the right hand side, we only used two sliders. And this is what's being represented in the top here. So it says 0.33 and 0.19. That was that really low micro contrast. So it's not perfect when it tells us that we've been into a, a plugin, but at least it tells us we've been into one. Another little thing to bear in mind as well with this is, if you go into Camera Raw from Photoshop, it will tell you you've gone into Camera Raw, but it won't give you a written record of every single step. 
So there you go, it's not perfect, but it does give a pretty detailed record of everything that you've done within Photoshop. And I'm using this all the time when I'm kind of just playing around in Photoshop and stumbling across techniques. At least this way, I've got a record that I can refer back to so I can see how I ended up with a particular result. But that's really all I've got for you this week. Just a quick tip. Uh, make sure that you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And of course, I'd really appreciate the support if you could let others know about this video and any other video that I post each week, including this weekly show, which is also now a podcast. Well, I'm hoping it is by the time you see this. But hey, for now, until next time, I'll see you soon. Thank you.